Hello and welcome to the Total Soccer Show. My name is Daryl Grove. Joining me as ever is Taylor Rockwell. Hello, Taylor Rockwell. Hello. And joining us uh, for this whole week, it's the Cooligans. Uh, it is Christian Polanco. Hello. Hello, everyone. And over there, Alexis Guerreras. Hello. Hey. <laughs> you got to be different, right? you got to be different. <laughs> I like also, that- did you just call me Alexis Guerreros? No, he said Guerreras. Guerreras. That's what, that's what I heard. So it's wrong either way. No. I like that Guerrero Russ. It's all of us. I'm going to stick with... <laughs> we are all Guerreros. Yeah, I Guerrero for all of us. <laughs> so we're, we're in our hotel room in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, and the yeah. fact it took me a second to think about that is a, it's sort of testament to how on the road we've been. It's also the case that it's like, what, a little after one in the morning is we're recording this. And I feel like with that in mind, you tried to do the Cooligans, like the, like the Cooligans shout, but you did it on like a muted I'll, level. I'll tell you what happened is I thought about it and then I'll back down. <laughs> There we go. I'll back down there out of go. respect to rooms 512 and 510, I believe. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, give away, nice. don't give away this type of information. <laughs> People can find us. <laughs> Just we, get, give our GPS yeah, right? like coordinates. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Daryl. 224. <laughs> starts. Also, Christian sleeps the hardest. <laughs> So we just got back from the Funny Bone. Uh, we we did our, our Save the Crew show. Everyone feel good about it? Yes. Yeah, we I, saved the crew. We did. It's, it's, it's over. Is it done? Yeah. <laughs> good job, Pre-court guys. Pre-court was like, that was just too funny. Uh, <laughs> Comedy wins again. Yeah. <laughs> Darn you kids meddling <laughs> in our business. <laughs> Yeah, it's done. We could we could just borrow Bush's uh, mission accomplished uh, flyer and just hang that up. It's all done. Yeah, just put it up. <laughs> that that means it isn't done. <laughs> all right, so we are here. We we agreed on the topic for this evening. Um, the U.S. men's national team coach, the next U.S. men's national team coach. I feel like we've been we've been wanting to talk about it on stage, and it, we've never quite done it. Let's. You guys start. did a little bit today, though. Did we? Yeah. Oh, we did because we talked about possibly Bearhalter. I was interested. Oh, let's start with this. I was interested in um, how a good percentage of crew fans were happy that their very good coach might leave the team and go coach the national team. Yeah, and it worked it worked really well. It was like an interesting conversation right up until we asked like would you be like would you be sad if they left? And it was a, like a kind of a larger audience discussion and then one woman very meekly was just like it doesn't matter if the team moves. Yeah. And I was like okay. Oh, no. <laughs> wow, just who wants to yeah. talk about comedy? Yeah. <laughs> like, like just de- completely yeah. defeated. Just when did your ex-husband break your heart? <laughs> yeah. I will say she she was very nice, though. She was yeah. very she nice. Was she was very sweet. Nice. And everyone in general, I, I, we, I think we, we were talking uh, about this before we got there. We didn't know exactly what to expect, right? It's a comedy show about something kind of tragic, a, a team leaving. But I, I or really, not. Or not. Or not leaving. Uh, but very we'll probably well, leave it. <laughs> not, not according to them, man. Alexis, Alexis was a fan favorite. Today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, they, but probably. Uh, we, but took, it, we took the over under on an Austin joke, right? Yeah, Thirty yeah. seconds from Alexis. <laughs> yeah, too bad it's too soon to make Sacramento jokes. That might be the next uh, location they're moving to. Oh, oh it would look. This is all too much speculation. Uh, <laughs> but it, it did feel uh, uh, how, how, like how passionate everyone was, and mm-hmm. and and it, it was it felt good to do a comedy show in that setting. They were so yeah. they were so on board and that's what the main thing we were worried about that maybe they wouldn't be on board also talking to people after the show it seemed like if you're really passionate about save the crew it, it's not been a fun ride and we kind of gave them a little relief yeah, yeah while still talking about it like it wasn't like they had to yeah. turn to something else they could still talk about save the crew but without it being so serious so i don't know i felt like we did a uh, like a real service you know who there were heroes today there were two people dressed in uh, Red Bull slash Metro Stars jerseys. Did you talk to these yes, guys? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. The one guy lives in Columbus and drives to 80% of the games at Rebel Arena. Incredible. That's insanity. <laughs> That's why I was part of me was like, you ever watch Godfather 2 when the Cuban dude grabs the cop and blows himself up? Yes. And he realizes, Michael's oh, impressed, right? Yeah, he's like, they're not going to lose. Uh-huh. They're not going to lose this revolution. For me and my people, I wish we did. Uh, <laughs> I wish they did. But he realized they're not. To me, that was a moment where I was like, now maybe the people here are just that passionate or that bored, okay, <laughs> that they would drive to New Jersey. <laughs> did, did, I, I didn't talk to them. Did, did he explain why he chose Red Bulls? Uh, his company moved him out of here four years ago. Ah, there we are. And he didn't want to get rid of his season tickets. And the guy in the Metro Star shirt is his boss. Oh, okay. Edwin. But they're best friends, yeah. Edwin, I believe. Yeah. Um, all right, shall we move on to... Next, no, US. I think I think we should stick with the Cuban Revolution. I think that's <laughs> yeah. really, really good. Well, let's talk about scene, the. I'm going from Godfather Part Two is all my knowledge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so next, U.S. Men's National Team uh, head coach. Yeah. Um, we, we're going to have some realistic conversation later. Mm-hmm. But what if we lived in an ideal world? Right. Um, who would we like to see? Taylor, I'm going to start with you since you're closest to me. It's an unconventional selection. I'm going to go with, uh, but it's a man who we we have seen 
do tactical instruction, and it seemed like it really resonated with the players who were being coached. He's got the confidence and the swagger. He's got a little bit of jokes to come in the locker room. It's that man right there. Alexis Guerrero to take over. Buddy, I accept the job. Uh, <laughs> I thought this is taking your man crush to the next level. <laughs> I'm just saying, the Swope Park Rangers players were like, they were listening in, in a, in a what I would say was a nonsense tactical instruction. They were like, okay, I could see how that would work. And it I, felt like he got them to buy it. I also felt like they were permission? trying. Oh, and I should clarify very quickly that it is 100% dependent upon Christian also also accepting that job, your co-head coaches, because oh, Christian sure. was the one who like mellowed it out a little bit and like yeah. was like we like I think we had forgotten the ball in that tactical instruction right. that Christian remembered to put sure. the ball in play. I was like, right. hey, very, important. Important. Yeah. very important. Have you considered moving the ball with the play? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Christian's constantly Christian's constantly bringing up stuff that's just not that important, <laughs> <laughs> getting in the way of my play. I will say as well in support of uh, your Alexis choice. Do you remember the uh, the two swap swap park players who didn't want to play Fuji with us? You motivated them to get up and do that's it right. so I by them. berating them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a form of man management. <laughs> one, dude had, one dude had cornrows, and I called him soft as hell. That dude was like, "Yo, let's go play this damn game." <laughs> you can't call a dude soft. And have him not play Fuji. All right. Oh, when you say dupe, it, it was a child. Also, let's keep in mind he was a teenager. She got up like he's a man. A, <laughs> he's a professional soccer player. To exactly, but they are children. Let's not lose sight of that. Oh, well, I'm, not, I'm not sure they were. weren't they like the Development Academy players? I think uh, it was a mix. It was a mix of uh, Swope Park USL and okay. Development. Academy. No, right, none yeah. of, I mean they weren't older than eight, seventeen, or eighteen years old. Right? I'm not crazy. No, I'm not crazy. Yeah, not. I'm not but, crazy. But it is also the case that Alexis motivated them to get out there, and then Christian won. So, so it's also <laughs> yeah, like you yeah. have to command that authority. That would, right. That'd feel good to defeat these professional players, <laughs> <laughs> these privileged professional <laughs> kids. <you know? laughs> no, it felt good. It was just like I look. I'm not a good soccer player by any means, but you know, when but, when it comes to competing against children, I'm gonna win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he goes all out. <laughs> Christian right. was throwing elbows. Christian, what, what's your choice for fantasy choice for U.S. Men's National Team head coach? But it, I know I said fantasy, but can we at least have an actual head coach, please? Yes. Excuse uh, me? <laughs> Shots fired. Yeah. Uh, f- uh, f- uh, you know what? The fantasy one is, is harder to sort of come up with. Uh, I mean, I guess fantasy. Pep, you, were you going to say Taylor? Pep, Pep, Pep Guardiola, right? That would be a fantasy. Yeah, uh, that's but, a good one. Well, he would be, be great, right? And uh, he would show us how to play the game because we don't know how to do it, right? So that, would, that would be exciting. So, yeah. Yeah, I guess Pep. Why not? That would be a great fantasy. All right, I'm going to lean into Jurgen Klopp if we're going uh, Premier League Premier League managers. How about that? I mean, none of them have crushed on the stage in Columbus. So <laughs> thus far, I feel like my nominations are really winning. <laughs> All right, so those are our four. I guess you, yours Wait, is kind of the best do, one. Do we didn't get Alexis? Oh, excuse me. Oh, is, well, the, is the new national team coach not allowed to pick one? <laughs> uh, You're so far away from us. I keep forgetting. Yeah, who, who, who's going to be your technical staff? Let us know. <laughs> Uh, you guys. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Um, th- we're going to be terrible at soccer, but we're going to be so good at podcasting, you guys. Uh, I think Pep Guardiola is actually not that fantasy of a choice. I feel like there, okay. is, there is a chance he, he would at some point consider a national team job, and I don't understand why you wouldn't pick the USA job. But if I had to pick... Um, a fantasy, I mean, someone that's not for, for real. Like how much time you got? <laughs> There's a, like a dozen reasons why you wouldn't pick the job. Who? <laughs> oh. I no, mean, a dozen reasons why you wouldn't take that job because of the infrastructure that the U.S. soccer kind of is giving you. Yeah, it's but I think what you're missing out is if you're the one who wins and fixes that, you're a hero forever. This and is from Pep Guardiola's perspective. This is from Pep Guardiola. Yeah. So that's enough reason. Like getting a statue, that's enough reason for me to do something a stupid. Statue. Where would that statue go? In Richmond, Virginia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. When, we, when we redo yeah. Miami yeah. Avenue. Yeah. Just flipping the bird at General Lee. <laughs> yeah. I, I, no, I like the idea of just partially removing the statue. So you just take down General Lee, you put Pep on the horse. You're good to go. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Or what, if go. You, what if you put Pep on General Lee's shoulders on top of the horse? <laughs> like okay. Tea, tea him? <laughs> which, yeah, yeah, I meant the which, other way. Which way is he yeah. facing? <laughs> Legs going down the back, buddy? I like your heads at. You, Dale Grove, have spent way too much time with the Cooligans. <laughs> That's what I'm realizing. They have been a bad influence. I don't yeah. see that now. Yeah. He, sent me, he sent me eggplant emojis in my text. <laughs> Daryl's oh, changed. Oh, oh, sorry, let's get lunch. Yeah, right, yeah. That's right. You're a vegetarian. Let's get a nice yeah. vegetarian yeah. lunch. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> my, 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 my serious, non-serious answer, though, really is Carlo Ancelotti. That's the mm. one that I would, I would love to see. I really feel like he's the manager who commands that respect, has that reputation. 
is getting up there in the years, so maybe is inclined to like move towards national team coaching, yeah. but also seems to be a coach who doesn't necessarily have a like specific system that everyone has to play, otherwise it won't work. He feels like the type who can kind of adjust things on the fly based on the personnel available. Ancelotti feels like veering into genuinely possible, though, right? Because he's not working right no, now? No, he got, he got the Napoli job. Did he? Mm-hmm. All right, well, congratulations. Yeah, exactly, I, that's why I'm sad. I didn't make a choice, but if I had to, uh, for fantasy, I'd say Arsene Wenger. And let me explain. For the jokes? <laughs> no, just for the bants. Uh, no, I think here's my uh, reason. Uh, good with youth, mm-hmm. good at developing, inspirational, right? Not good tactically, and probably not someone that would sit there and, and choose tactics based on our, uh, you know, our opposition, which would really annoy me. But I'm sure he would have a staff that would do that. And if you had someone that would motivate uh, youth players to play better, and would trust his players to go out there and sort of play on their own, yeah. which he did for a long time, and it worked for a long time. Uh, and he's not, you know, hampered by having to make uh, cash decisions, you know, budget decisions. He has the players he has, and that's it. I feel like he'd be great. Isn't the problem that when our best players were getting towards their peak, they would leave for other national teams? <laughs> that really hurts as an Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I think the only thing Arsene Wenger would I appreciated inspi- the two seconds of stunned silence. <laughs> yeah. oh, that was good. I was just like, I can't believe he did that to me. <laughs> the only thing he would inspire is uh, very creative Wenger out signs. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would also be fun. <laughs> Little arts and crafts. All right, before we move on to uh, more realistic choices, today's show is sponsored by. Roughneck Scarves. Roughneck Scarves sponsoring today's Total Soccer Show. I've got to say, I'm very happy that I've got Alexis doing another ad for us here on TSS. <laughs> we got you working. We got you working. Yeah. What was the last one I did? You did um, Squarespace, which is yeah. not a Roughneck competitor, so we can say their name within the ad. That's right. And I almost flubbed it by, by naming a competitor. Yeah, so yeah, let's during... move on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So at all our shows, we, we've had um, the uh, World Cup Comedy Tour Scarves. They, they've been selling really well. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people in Columbus uh, love them. It's, it's, it's been cool seeing... Uh, I've been taking photos of a couple of them that yeah. uh, you know we'll be posting on... Oh, who knows where? Uh, on Cool Against Facebook, Total Soccer Show Facebook. Just follow us on everything. But it, they, it, it is like a... It's a nice blue argyle uh, mm-hmm. scarf. And it just... It looks great. And it looks great when I take photos of it. Well, you wearing it, guys. <laughs> you know what else I'm impressed oh. by is... Uh, I remember Roughneck Scarves always wear the knit ones. Yeah. They yep. were like a classic look. And the scarves we have are sublimated. That's like when you print on the yep. fabric. Yeah. So I was like, oh, man. They can do more than just like the the traditional style that they're known for. I was very impressed. And I was really afraid of what the Cooligans logo would look like, Nick. You know, just like a bunch of black and white dots. It looked really dope yeah, on the scarf. Nice. Both because sublimated is a lot smoother, right? Yeah, it's just no like printed onto the fabric yeah. as opposed to like it, you know, uh, what's the word? Knit? Woven? Woven. Knit, woven. Yeah. Whatever. I don't, I don't know what y'all are talking about. So this is the part where I like Homer Simpson into the bushes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. go, yeah, sublimated, of course. You Google, know Google print sublimation, my guy. <laughs> Yo, um, for real though, you mad graceful. <laughs> <laughs> but the lo- but the logo, both logos look good. The Total Soccer Show logo and the yeah. Cooligans logo. I like and, seeing them together. Yeah, they look yeah. they look nice. And, but, but at a respectful distance at either end of the sky. Yeah, of course, yeah, you right. know well, they cannot be too close to each other. <laughs> Something weird would happen. Right? <laughs> crossing the streams, crossing yeah. the streams. You hear snapping like West Side Story. <laughs> So if you go to if you go to roughneckscarves.com you can shop like a huge selection of scarves but you can also make custom scarves which is how we did the World Cup comedy tour scarves. Absolutely. If you want to buy a, a roughneckscarves.com uh, scarf, national teams, US national team especially, the US women's national team scarves that we took a look at with uh, the players names on them. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, go to roughneckscarves.com, use the discount code Total Soccer Show or one word, you'll get 20% off any scarf that you find there. Thank you to Roughneck Scarves. Thank you to Alexis and Christian for introducing me to, what was the term? Print Sub- sublimation. I've already forgotten it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. But they do look good. That's what all the good. kids are talking about. And they are, And they are. I would say, first of all, lies. Second of all, uh, <laughs> with it being lightweight, it is nice for the summer because we've, you know, we've been yeah. in some humid places. It's been like 85 degrees. Mm-hmm. The lightweight, better than the wool when it comes to summer. That's just my expert opinion. Oh, yeah. But, uh, based on our experience so far, everywhere in America is humid right uh, now. Correct. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. To the serious business. Mm-hmm. Let's pick the next U.S. men's national team head 
coach if we could get with ernie stewart and tell him hey is this this is the guy this is the guy what would we say to him and why we'll go same order as last time taylor rockwell please don't say alexis again i was about to um <laughs> i mean i think i think it's probably i'm gonna go somewhere in between honestly between a conventional and maybe an unconventional selection because i think an mls coach is probably the most likely i think an mls coach who speaks english is the most likely because it seems like that's where u.s soccer is veering towards i think mm-hmm. other candidates uh, maybe are going to look towards other national team jobs, looking specifically at Tata Martino. So I would say it's a little bit out there, but I would say Hervé Renard, the head coach of Morocco, is a realistic choice that I think would be very good for the U.S. Did national you just team. go most handsome possible coach? I mean, that doesn't hurt. Having Jamie <laughs> Lannister as your manager is always a helpful thing. You did that twice, too, with the fantasy you picked me, and now you picked this guy. <laughs> I mean, you guys are basically like doppelgangers <laughs> yeah, for Jamie yeah. Lannister. We're like twins. <laughs> the movie. What do you guys think about Hervé Renard? <laughs> <laughs> Taylor's just like, I don't Okay, who the manager is, he just has to be hot. <laughs> Does I he mean, make me tinkle downstairs? <laughs> Tink, tinkle? tinkle? I meant what tingle. Was tingle? <laughs> yes. Tink- no, no, you guys don't know that about Taylor. You need to see a doctor. No, Taylor, <laughs> put, Taylor pees every time he's... <laughs> Don't, don't put your mistake on me. <laughs> Just because maybe you do some questionable things at home. <laughs> Every time he gets the juices flowing. <laughs> All right, let's, let's talk tactics. Uh, sure. what, what did Renard do with uh, Morocco? Yeah. What, how did he have them playing? Uh, he got them... Uh, Without using the words budget Spain. <laughs> I... I Discount Spain? Um, no, I would say I would say to that point, it's a, it's a bunch of players from a diverse set of backgrounds, mm-hmm. not necessarily coming from Morocco, but you have lots of people from the Moroccan diaspora. So he's able to get players from different backgrounds, playing for different teams, playing different styles, buying into one system that was that sort of possession, high tempo, high pressing style. It didn't necessarily work in the sense that they got out of the group, yeah. but in a group that was a super compact Iran and then Spain and Portugal, yeah. I think that they were able to play entertaining soccer and kind of impress uh, a lot of neutrals yeah. to me that speaks volumes about what he could do with a team like the US who do have a lot of talent that maybe hasn't been harnessed in a collective way plus he got them to the World Cup so he's already doing better well, there's than that too the, that, the last, that certainly the last people on the job yeah. alright so one vote for Herb Renard mm-hmm. is how I'm going to pronounce it All right. um, Christian Palanco uh, your choice? You, you mentioned who uh, my realistic choice mm-hmm. and, and but you did make a, a point about it, it being important uh, or you think that the US soccer that US soccer is going to be focusing on getting an English speaking coach but I do think Tata Martino would be yeah. uh, an absolutely amazing choice uh, I mean I've seen I watched some of the Atlanta United uh, uh, training videos and he goes back and forth with English mm-hmm. and Spanish uh, I think he can be a, a perfectly good head coach I mean We've seen. Uh, we were talking uh, earlier with during lunch because I I always feel uncomfortable. I feel like I don't understand uh, coaching well enough to give a a, a strong answer or a confident answer because I, I I feel like I focus too much on uh, coaches who who man manage better than uh, than I understand mm-hmm. tactically what they do. So like I've seen Patrick Vieira uh, tr- during training. I've met him in person. I've I've. I feel like he was, I was like, oh, he's a he he can communicate his message yeah. to his players, and he yeah. speaks he he demands a lot of, of of his players. So when I see that, I'm like, oh, those are the kind of qualities I would love to see in, in the, uh, the for the U.S. men's national team job. But Tata Martino, seeing what he's done and what he, what he's done in, in a little amount of time, I think he would be a, a great coach. What about Patrick Vieira? I, I based on his results, especially against the Red Bulls, and, and his. Uh, lack of willingness to kind of adapt to a game. He's he is very f- stuck and focused on what the system should be. And sometimes I feel like he. He also I, sucks I, at substitutions. Who? Vier- Vieira. I don't know. I wouldn't agree there. But I, I'd say I think he's very he's stuck in. He rather lose with his system than than adapt. Uh, and and during the game and try to win because I think he, he might feel like it's a sign of weakness. That's a, and this is me basing it on the last couple of results against the Red Bulls. Jesse Marsh always uh, was very focused on I'm I'm gonna do everything I can to 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 highlight the weaknesses of NYCFC and uh, and Vieira never seemed to uh, adapt uh, in that scenario regardless of how many times they got smashed by the Red Bulls. I would add though that like when we're talking about realistic choices when it comes to Vieira he did just sign for yeah nice. exactly so, so I have so a feeling that, that he's probably not gonna give that. 
perfect contract, yes. which is why I didn't mention him. But, but I do. But we, he has shown that he's quite willing to just leave a team whenever. Well, there is that. <laughs> there is that. But only if they're not that good and he has an opportunity to move to a better team. Um, <laughs> okay. In, in I face. wish Bruce Arena had that talent. Yeah, that would have been lovely. <laughs> but I would say to Tata Martino, um, I really do think my only like hesitation about him is I do think he's looking for a different national team gig. So I think, mm. but I, I really do think he is, my, like of MLS coaches, he is my favorite coach uh, because I think he has, again, the respect. He has the reputation and the resume that I think would carry weight. And the biggest thing, we've talked about this a lot, is like U.S. soccer, I, I'm pretty sure they still haven't updated their Spanish language page. It, their Spanish language video page is, I think, a Landon Donovan video from like 2013, maybe even 2010. Mm-hmm. Like they haven't done a lot with that. And I feel like that would speak volumes towards incorporating other communities that aren't, you know, what white guys. Like, I think that would be an important step for the U.S. national team. And then on top of that, Tata Martino, again, has that respect and has done the work with Atlanta United that I think would resonate. Can so I, I say this? Because I don't, I don't completely agree. Because one, Latinos don't even like Argentinians. Mm-hmm. So that's not going to happen. And two, can someone name me four American players he's even comfortable playing on his winning, on his team? For... Uh, Argentinians are Latinos, so what are you talking about? I said other Latinos don't even like Argentinians. Oh, I think, so, other, I think you said just Latinos don't like Argentinians, which makes no sense because they are Latino. But what other. I'm saying is that's not gonna that's not gonna bond the Latin community. We all no, it's, it's Argentinians not, think of themselves as Italian anyway. So. Yeah, no, it's not it's not that for me. It's more so the idea of having a coach who is fluent in Spanish, speaks Spanish, is representative of a Spanish. That's culture. certainly important. That to me, or not Spanish culture, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Like that, that to me would. Uh, be I think that would be important, but again, also maybe this is me. Like I don't know, speaking out of school, I'm I'm more than happy to accept that. I'm just saying, like I'm, I took a, I just want to take a shot at Argentinians. Uh, <laughs> really, all it was. my choice is going to be Argentinian, <laughs> by the way. Uh, but m- my point is, he doesn't even play Americans on his team. Uh, Greg me Garza f- would like my, to work Michael, with you. Yeah, Garza, Michael Park, Garza, Garza Nagby, Gazan, Parker, Gazan. Gazan. Who else? Carlton got the start the other day. Carlton, yeah. Jeff Lorenowitz has gotten minutes. The, right, but so this, a this, this issue <laughs> has nothing to do with Martino. This is every MLS team where that's now that, not, there's not more a, money. There's more money involved. They, they're getting better players, and the American players having a tougher time getting in the lineup. But I'm think, not saying that it's that he's he's asymptomatic of the rest of the league. Wow, it's late for me to use that word. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe you used asymptomatic before you cursed. <laughs> that is I, I, shocking. Oh, no, Cooligans! Elite. There uh, we go. <laughs> By the way, just so you know, just so you know, we're never getting rid of the Cooligans thing. Oh, you're so right? anytime we curse from now on, it's just going to be you saying Cooligans. Can, wow. I, can I redo that by saying, uh, listen to the Cooligans? <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> uh, real quick, no, you cannot. Yeah. All right, cool. Unsubscribe from the Cooligans. <laughs> Actually, That's unsubscribe from Men in Blazers, uh, please. Yeah. Uh, so my point is, I get that what he's doing isn't different from other teams. I'm just saying, all, Burhalter uses more American players than not. Uh, certainly more than uh, Atlanta United. That's probably because of the budget. There's a lot of other reasons. But whatever, anytime he gets a chance to have a better player, they go out and get an Argentinian dude. They're maybe not going he, if out he did get, that for the national team, maybe we'd do better. Well, she, uh, I mean, look, I'll do it, but can anyone explain Joseph Martinez being on the U.S. national team? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because if you come up with a spin for it, baby, I'm all for it. Wait, who gets who gets an Argentinian player? Uh, Tata Martino. Name an Argentinian player that plays for Atlanta United. Uh, Rometty. Okay. I'm just saying, like, his big signings have been, like, a Venezuelan. They've been a Paraguayan. They've been <laughs> another Paraguayan, I believe. Like, Yeah. There's Baku. Okay, there yeah. we go. All right, Gonzalez Pires, uh, LGP is Argentinian, right? Argentinian. Yeah, I think he's the only. All other. right, I stand correct. All right, we're, <laughs> we're turning into the un- unrelegated podcast. Yeah. <laughs> That's not true because none of us are drinking wine. <laughs> um, so, Alexis, um, who is who's your choice? Well, I think there's only one choice, and I, it's so great that you guys picked all these B options because the only option that belongs in A is the one and only, the greatest coach to ever grace this world. Jorge Sampaoli. Oh, okay. So just so listeners know, we kind of had this conversation um, at lunch uh-huh. and, and it got loud. Oh, I got it very got loud. loud. I was reminded I was in a restaurant. Oh, you're not <laughs> supposed they, to scream. Didn't it come up on stage today or no? No, it didn't come it up. No, no. Okay, they didn't ask me that. I was ready to go. Though. <laughs> Look, I know he failed with Argentina. The only reason I'm saying that is because I just wanted to take a bullet out of Taylor's gun. <laughs> okay. And I don't think that we should discount that. But also, you got to look at the rest of his resume. He's basically done extremely well and or won anywhere else he went. And he also beat Argentina twice. Or well, well, once, because he wasn't the coach the second time. But his team did that with his tactics. <laughs> that, was, that was such a major yeah. concession. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they did, it with his team. they did it with his team, his lineup, and his tactics. 
<laughs> he won the World Cup four times. Okay, yeah. maybe not, but still. <laughs> maybe he didn't do that himself. But what I'm saying is he was there. Uh, what I'm saying is I think he's, he's in my eyes, his tactics fit the American player. Well, um, what was it? It was Simon Borg or, or Matt Doyle. Wait, oh, his tactics or Leo Messi's tactics? Just clarify that for me. No, Amer- Leo Messi's tactics got them knocked out of the World Cup. <laughs> uh, um, well, who, who was it that looked back at all the U.S. games and figured out what the men's national team American style of soccer is? Oh, it was is? Matt Doyle, I believe, for Howler Magazine. Okay, so yeah. Matt Doyle watched everything, and he said that they're athletic, they run hard, they can press really well. But their tactics are lacking and I think going central. I can't remember exactly. In other words, the point is exactly what he said they do is how Sampaoli wants you to play. This is the style we fit. Our youth players, you mentioned Tyler Adams. I mentioned Weston McKinney. Uh, guys like Tim Weah. This is the way they play. Christian Pulisic. This is the way he plays. It makes all the sense in the world to bring this guy in. It literally fits what we do. And if we allow him or at least his tactics to be uh, you know, brought down to the youth, We'll just teach them to play the way they these kids want to play anyway. I do. I do see like uh, say for me, Mascherano was a problem for Argentina at the World Cup because he was like key central midfielder, but just didn't have the legs that he used to have. The so most important that position energy. is that position yeah, in exactly. Sampoli's system, right? But too, yeah, Vidal could do it. For example, so if you think of Tyler Adams in the Vidal role instead of an aging Javier Mascherano, right? Who was still, I think, younger than almost everybody in this room but you know yeah. Um, then yeah I can, I that can see old man yeah. <laughs> I can see a big that difference. fossil yeah. <laughs> I think the, the two most important positions are like, are what, like the uh, sort of a number 10 kind of a cam position to some degree like you a Vidal cam? yeah for central attacking midfielder yeah I'm stealing that why I'm just keeping it I like it so oh you like oh, cam you've never heard that before uh-uh. yeah no. that's incredible oh, right. but, uh, per our conversation in the car it's actually Sam <laughs> With all the Jif gif, very nice, very nice. All right, I'll call it it's whatever you want. Central attacking, so it's yeah. sir. So, so then it should be Cam, because I say it's Jif. So oh, it's yeah. the opposite of the one you use. Bam, I feel, bam, I feel bam. Like got, I feel like we got sidetracked. That's fine. I feel like we got anyway, sidetracked. like I was saying, GIF is a, no. <laughs> I think his most important position is Cam and uh, CDM, central defensive midfielder, uh-huh. because that guy kind of almost plays like a swinger and has to be able to run up and back. And I think we have Weston McKinney. And I don't know who would play central. I know everyone says Christian Pulisic is better on the wing. I think he could play central. Right. I would love to see him play central. And I think uh, those two players, it puts our two best players right now in their prime, in the perfect program and system for their talent and skill. Someone tell me I'm wrong because you can. <laughs> here's, my, here's my concern, right? Christian Pulisic's profile in this country is like rising every day. And he's almost becoming a... Uh, like, messianic messy figure like we could be three years away with San Paoli from uh, Christian Pulisic picking the team at the World Cup <laughs> and imagine they win he'd be the greatest player of all time and I would thank San Paoli for that well he did show a lot of confidence uh, during the ICC game when uh, after he drew the penalty and took the ball from Mario Goethe to take, yeah. the, to take the penalty yeah. so yeah. Goethe yeah. really thought he was taking that penalty yeah right? I know right <laughs> <laughs> I mean Christian Pulisic get your Coaching license, yeah. you're, you're ready, man. Pulisic was like, son, we in my house. <laughs> <laughs> it did have that feel, though. It did, I know we're like to get sidetracked for a minute. It really did feel like that was Christian Pulisic being like, no, 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 like, no, no. Yeah. Y- you, yeah, you yeah. were, you were four years ago. It's my turn now. Like, <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I enjoyed that very much. I would say I enjoy your explanation for Jorge Sampaoli, but I think like everything you said isn't necessarily something I disagree with. But I think you cannot just kind of like shove off to the side how spectacularly he failed with Argentina at the World Cup. And it's not even that he got it wrong. Managers fail. That happens sometimes. They get fired. They get a new job. They succeed. It's how he failed. It is how publicly his players just disrespected him and did not care. And I would say I would agree with you if he got another job and like did that for a year and it was fine. And then U.S. Soccer hired him. I feel like you've got it because I think he's going to be so desperate to prove that it wasn't this horrible mistake that I feel like he's going to go over the top. And he already has a reputation of being a little bit petty and a little bit spiteful and a little bit mean and I don't know if that's going to translate well when it, you add like desperate to prove himself to that list. I don't know that he would be desperate to prove himself because I don't think the USA job is a one cycle job. No one expects US, uh, US men's national team to win Qatar, the World Cup of Qatar. No one expects that. But when it comes to 2026, we need to be in a great position. That's when all these players are going to be in their prime. Two cycles in a system that perfectly it fits. It never fails. It always works to have two cycle coaches. Yeah, yeah. It's never it never fa- backfires spectacularly. It's never failed once that I can think of right now, except for <laughs> Jurgen Klinsmann and everyone else. Uh, what I'm saying is it gives him eight years to implement a system. So in 2026, let's say, what, what would you say is a peak for a World Cup? 25, 26? 
I think France and England were both like 24-ish on average, right? I mean, or, uh, yeah. I, so I let's use say, that as the let's, average. Let's say mid-20s. So let's say, well, let's use 24 as an average. So that means kids that are 16 now. So the kids that we're just learning about now being really good, maybe some kids that are in the academy at like NYCFC or DC United, those are the kids that are going to be playing in, the, in, in their peak at the Qatar World Cup. That's, that's old enough where maybe their tactics are set. But if th- this is the style we play, Jorge Sampoli is going to come in and basically give them the clearance and the freedom to play the style that fits our athleticism the best. Mm-hmm. Why are we fighting it? We're not going to play like England. We're not going to play like Argentina. Or I'm sorry, uh, we're not going to play like Argentina before Sampaoli. We're not going to play like Spain. We play the way we play. And this fits exactly what we do, and it makes us look good. What do you, what do you mean when you say that it fits exactly what we do? Because if, if what the way we Americans want to play is athletic and heavy pressing and maybe not controlling the ball slowly and keeping possession. Maybe it's, you know, crowding, uh, you know, the other, the other uh, third, the final third. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's, uh, you know, I don't know, quick uh, counters when available. If that's the way we play, then give us a guy who's the best at doing that. And name me someone besides a crazy person named Marcelo Bielsa that's better than San Paoli at teaching that. Maybe Klopp, I'll give you that. But other than that, Tuchel is out of his mind. I don't want that guy either. You know, so who do I want? Sampaoli. Is he out of his mind? Yeah. Just, but he, just the blanket, like, like <laughs> just, he's out of his mind. That's yeah, but everyone, everyone knows that he's been, that. He's been diagnosed. You yeah. know? <laughs> also, Pulisic apparently doesn't like him very much. So I'm happy moving away from that. Did mm-hmm. I hear that from his uncle? I don't know. I'm just saying. Right, it his, was spoken about. Here's one, um, one in favor of Sampaoli. One point in favor of Sampaoli is I kind of agree with your point that he has this great resume up until Argentina. Um, but I also understand Taylor's point now. The, the pu- very public embarrassment of him standing on the sidelines, side, sideline, excuse me, scowling while clearly the players were running the team. His stock is at an all-time low, but maybe that means it's time to buy, right? It's like if Apple took a nosedive tomorrow and all the stocks were a penny, you'd probably be like, all right, I'm going to buy some Apple stock. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so or, like fa- be- or like Facebook, who actually did yes. take a dive today and lost $118 billion. Yeah, I'm still not buying that stock. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm, what, to, to me, like, I get Taylor's argument, but to me it's like saying, oh, Google's not a good company because Wave sucked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's like, yeah, but everything else they did is dope. You know what I mean? And that's how I feel about Sampaoli. He's won everywhere with less. He goes to Argentina, which didn't have less, which had a lot, and he couldn't win. We got less. Come fix us. So his, the, the, one problem, the one problem I was going to point out is his lack of familiarity or possibly even awareness of Major League Soccer. Oh, yeah. He has, I, don't, I don't even think he can speak the language. The, the MLS language? The MLS. Yeah. So a gam town. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He to doesn't know what YTF things. is. Uh, so, I look, yeah, look, there's certainly there's not a lot of positives as far as language and his ability to connect with the players. I, I got no excuses for that. Yeah. But he couldn't do that at Sevilla either. I mean, he could speak I mean, he could the language. Speak yeah, but he didn't know those players. And again, he turned in Zonzi into an amazing midfielder that was sought after. It's never happened before. What was he playing at Stoke before that? I don't even know. I think Zonzi, Zonzi, Steven and Zonzi, yeah, yeah. He was at Stoke. He was at Stoke. Come on now. Right? Stoke <laughs> and sought after never go together. Uh, and he turned Samir Nasri. He turned him back in time into a good wing player slash midfielder. Come on. Right. If you could do that with him, what would he do with a player like, I don't know, pick someone on the U.S. team that hasn't lived up to their potential? Everyone. So well, one, one thing I would say isn't a shot at Jorge Sampaoli, but it is another reason why I don't think he would ever get the job, is that I also think that sometimes the roster selection isn't necessarily up to the coach. I think there's insight from other people, and I do think that Jorge Sampaoli is not going to be one to like take input from other people. It's like, no, these are the people I'm choosing, and I feel like just that combined with some of what we've already talked about with Argentina and his reputation preceding him, mm-hmm. I feel like it could be... I thought U.S. soccer would be hesitant to be like, sure, let's jump on in and see what happens. So one final question mm-hmm. on Sam Paoli. Because I feel like we've stuck on him a long time, but in a weird way, he's the most interesting one because... Yeah, we didn't really talk about Hervé Renard at all, and I'm cool with that. But also, Sam Paoli... Do you want to come back to him? No, I want to talk to yours. I want to talk to yours. But Sam Paoli yeah, yeah. almost got, like, or supposedly got an offer from... The U.S. national is that right? I, I haven't yeah, had this conversation. That was then. the rumor, but it's some people, rumor. Some people were saying that they that his like camp put that information out there so that he he could seem more sought after and he would get like he could uh, have a like a sort of bidding war. So that right. sounds like maybe desperation. Which yeah, goes or back maybe to a certain, well, I just called every point. journalist I know. I've got, <laughs> I've got both of them. I've got one <laughs> one final one final angle on this is um, from what I've read. 
right? He's not a very nice man. So do you know, you know Tim Vickery? The, he, he works for the BBC sometimes, <laughs> South American. Kind of a horrible little man, Cara, isn't he? Spindon, he called him a nasty little man. There you go. Yeah, and can, you I, can I answer that? Yeah, with, of course. Uh, four words? Who gives a cooligans? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for saving me the edit. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't. So I I do give a cooligans about that <laughs> because. Oh my god! No, because I think being the national team head coach, especially in in, in the United States, it, you're something of an ambassador for soccer, right? And you're sort of representing to the fans. I think it's important if you're a nice guy, or at least not a nasty guy. No, nah, those days are over, man. I'm tired. I'm tired of it. I, I'm tired of being nice when everyone's walking all over you. I'm tired of being nice when people are making fun of you behind your back because of the words you use or the style you play. Oh, you think he'd go to bat for America? I'm talking about like within within American soccer. He might just, be a nasty little man to deal with. I mean, maybe. I don't know that he would necessarily go to bat for America, but I don't mind if the guy at the helm is a little bit of a, of a nasty dude. I don't mind if he has a little bit of an attitude, and that's why one of the names we shot out when we were talking about at lunch was Caleb Porter. I like that grit, and I like a guy mm-hmm. who's not going to take cooligans from other people you know what i mean i want someone i want someone to finally represent this country in soccer with the attitude we have in every other sport and i'm not saying we walk in and think we're winning but yo don't disrespect me if you beat me in 90 i'll shake your hand if you disrespect me beforehand don't expect me to be nice back to you and i want someone to do that i want someone who has maybe my attitude and my uh you know because uh, it's led to so much success <laughs> Buddy, I'm here with you. Right. You hitched your boat. You hitched your boat to my tugboat. Yeah, we're all we're all in a hotel room at 2 a.m. recording a podcast. So yeah. let's, let's just not start throwing stones in, in the beautiful Columbus, Ohio. Actually, I'm sorry, we're just outside Columbus because yeah, that's how well we're doing. But uh, I don't I don't care about that. I don't think it matters. I don't care how nice you are. Bruce Arena seems pretty nice sometimes until he failed and he won't admit to it and he won't admit it's his fault. <laughs> and that didn't get us anywhere. Jurgen Klinsmann seems like someone who's pretty political. That didn't get us anywhere. Give me an attitude. Give me someone who's got grit. Give me someone who'll like knock a mic down or two, you know? All right. Okay. I my, think my, you my, I, my final final thing. Sorry. Go I was just going to say it seems like you're you want Mike Mike Petke to get the job. <laughs> oh my God! Can I make that my fantasy pick? <laughs> Mike Petke, you, 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 the printer's broken, and what am I supposed to do here? I'm trying to play against these guys. You know they get the wrong Press bread. Here, <laughs> yeah. All right, what about you, Daryl? All right, so um, Alexis said that he wanted San Paoli maybe because it like reflected almost his interests. <laughs> you know, in terms of just like being like being kind of mean to. <laughs> Not that you're mean, but you know you're going to go somebody nice, aren't you? <laughs> no, I I think um, for our podcast. Juan Carlos Osorio would be an absolute godsend. Oh, there it is. Okay. This is insanity. <laughs> really? Yes. All right, hear me out, because I heard you ask. You want the guy who failed at MLS? <laughs> so, so no is the answer to hear me out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the, I think the problem with, say, uh, Klinsman and Arena um, over the last uh, few years has, has been that there isn't necessarily um, a detailed plan for every game, right? What we learned about Juan Carlos Osorio is that you give him time, he will come up with an, like a really, really detailed plan. He'll think it through. He'll spot opposition weaknesses and pick um, a team accordingly. I would love to see um, a U.S. coach do that. A U.S. coach who could go up against Germany, have time to prepare, and like realize, okay, Kimmich's going to come forward, so we're going to do this thing where we play a ball into our into our strike, and he lays it off into that space that Kimmich's left behind, and then that and then that guy goes to goal, right? I think uh, we I read Grant Wall's book, right, and th- th- he calls it he speaks to Osorio, and Osorio calls it a synchronization, right? There are like team patterns of play like moves that the te- special moves let's call them that the team has and um, i would love to see a coach build that for the united states for, first of all i would say like in going from no plan to one color cesario you're going from like like, <laughs> like infant picture book to like eight thousand eight thousand yeah. page book that maybe makes sense and you're yeah. not quite sure but at the end you finished it and you're kind of confused yeah i, I believe i believe drake put it best when he said zero to a hundred real quick uh, <laughs> and that's exactly what one color is uh, here's what here's my point uh have you ever heard it's a very american thing have you ever heard the term over coaching i mean i I think I can figure out what it means. It's like when you you outcoach yourself, you you overthink it and put your team in a worse position. He's literally done that everywhere he's gone, and he did it again at this World Cup. He did. They call him a tinkerer. He's constantly yeah. making changes when he doesn't need it. He makes a great plan, and then he second guesses himself, or he overthinks it. 
I don't want that at the helm. I don't want that at the top. No, Lexus uh, just wants a guy who won't think at all and give it to yeah, somebody yeah. else. To Could die. you imagine if someone just got angry Christian, and wore tight shirts? <laughs> oh, it'd be so much fun. Sleeve tattoos, let's get it. <laughs> Head like a basketball, let's go. But but I, I do I do agree with you, Daryl, that like and I actually agree with both of you that I think you can go too far, you can tinker too much, and he has definitely done that. And I think we saw a few signs in this World Cup where he had kind of tried to address like tinkering too much, mm-hmm. but then I think he did steer into it at times, and he still had that inclination. But maybe the U.S. is the one job where he finally like gets it right and figures it out. <laughs> yeah, because I think the problem with uh, Mexico and Osorio this World Cup was he under tinkered. Like he should have um, switched the team up against Sweden and picked a team that was um, specifically designed to play against Sweden. Instead, he stuck with what had been working uh, yeah. previously. Well, I you think I mean? he probably fell for, the, like, the, the whole narrative was always like, oh, he's going to, we're, we're waiting for it. He's going to yeah. change everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and it's going to it's gonna ruin everything. Uh, but it's weird. It's a, in a, it's a tough position because if they would have won, then then he's a brilliant man. But, mm-hmm. you know, it, it didn't work out so well. Did he start Rafa Marquez in that game against Sweden? He, he yeah, Mark, I, either he started yeah. him or he brought him in, and yeah, way, he definitely didn't played well. Pretty sure he started. No, he definitely him started. Yeah, exactly. they, yeah. I think he took him off in the, in the beginning of the second half. Yeah, but, he, but that wasn't like a necessarily a rotation thing. I think there was uh, Ayala was suspended, right? So like it was Marquez had to come in. That that change was forced by suspension. See, so the, you but, hold on, you brought in a thirty eight year old to play half that, the game. Right there, that right there. That's that's an issue for me. Is that, and we talked about this on the show at the time that like. To say, like, oh, well, he had this injury and this suspension and then this injury, so he had to play this guy. Like, no, he had plenty of other younger holding midfielder options. He chose the guy who he brought in for, like, presence and leadership, mm-hmm. but that presence and leadership doesn't translate to playing defensive midfield. Yeah, I mean, so I think Rafa Marquez is a special case, though, right? Like, Rafa Marquez is this like, legend of Mexico. I mean, I mean like, the U.S. Department of Customs? I mean, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. He's a very <laughs> special <laughs> case, yes. Yeah, yeah at, the, at the ATF and the DEA. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Certainly. Here's, so, I, I have a question for you guys. Yeah. Who do you think learned more? Or from a bad World Cup, Juan Carlos Osorio or Jorge Sampaoli? I think Juan Carlos Osorio. What do you think he learned? Because he made the same mistakes he always makes. Alexis didn't no, like your answer. He made he made different mistakes to the ones he usually makes. So I think that's I Ooh, think mixing that's it up, Juan. Right <laughs> All right, Juan. Yeah. Uh, no, he Juan even tinkered said. with his mistake. <laughs> <laughs> no, he so he over tinkered in the past. Like say let's say 2016 Copa America, and it led to that disastrous game against uh, Chile, Chile, right? Yeah. Um, actually, against San Paolo, Chile. Mm-hmm. I'm going to address that before you do. Mm. <laughs> Uh, at the World Cup, he under tinkered, and I think m- maybe when we get him, he's going to be right in the middle. Perfect. So I think you, all you did was justify, man. I got to keep tinkering because I didn't tinker. Look what happened. I think San Baoli was successful everywhere he went, failed at that, and I think his next job, which should be a national team job, and hopefully with the U.S., I think he's going to look then. He's going to go. I can never let happen again what happened in Argentina. See, but I, I think in this case, for both of you, I think you're both... I mean, you're arguing your side, so that's what's going to happen. But like, I feel like if you just switched your arguments around, you're making the exact same argument. Like, You, you want to believe that Jorge Sampaoli is going to learn from his mistakes. You want to believe that Juan Carlos Osorio is going to learn from his mistakes. And so you're just inclined to say, I bet he will. But we don't really know. That's what it comes down to for me. It's like, like Jorge, Jorge Sampaoli didn't give me any indication that he was like conciliatory or like oh i gotta change my approach it was just sort of i'm gonna go down the tunnel and not speak to the press and not take much responsibility for this and juan carlos osorio i mean he's gonna be juan carlos osorio all right any uh to to close it up just i want to say one thing because uh he took all responsibility for he said it was he's the one to blame don't blame the players Mm -hmm. and what i'm saying is he has a career of success and failed once juan carlos osorio has a career of failing failed again but he didn't fail the way he normally fails and Daryl says, well, he's going to learn to go back to failing the other way. I want the guy who has a career of success. I want Tata Martino. <laughs> <laughs> All right, to, uh, to wrap it up, do we have any wild card suggestions? Any wild cards that we sort of haven't mentioned yet? I kind of like Mike Petke. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Petke. Petke would be awesome, although he has no idea what he's doing tactic-wise. Uh, I think uh, Caleb Porter. Caleb Porter, interesting. All right. I think he doesn't. He- you like his attitude, right? I do like his attitude. I also like the way he plays. Uh, you know, when he was at Akron and when he was at uh, uh, Portland for a little while before mm-hmm. he switched it up. He was doing, yeah, he was doing a lot, <laughs> he doing a lot more of like uh, a little less, not as much sticky tackle. But remember like when Arsenal, like when Mesut Ozil uh, started uh, playing a bit more direct and it was a blend of that like total total football slash bit more direct. I, that's a lot of how Caleb Porter, at least how I saw it that he played. Yep. I would love to see that with the men's national team. He didn't have a job. He didn't take the Orlando job, and he seems to not want another job. So I think he's open for this. Either him or Jesse Marsh. 
Jesse March. Yeah, I, th- I thought of him, but obviously the assistant coaching job uh, he just took. But maybe he sort of decides, eh, maybe not this. There's a lot of those because there's other ones out there that I think like, could be very interesting. But then the situation, I feel like, kind of rules them out on, mm-hmm. automatically. Like another wild card that I think a lot of people like, and I think a lot of people like because he just manages in England, is uh, David Wagner yeah. or David Wagner because he's American. Um, but But yeah, like that's one who... I think could be very interesting because he likes the high pressure system. He's good with managing like le- like lesser talented in terms of global standard yeah. players, but still very talented players. Is and the, get him to perform. Is the U.S. the the Huddersfield of of world soccer? I mean, kind of. I mean, it's the same jokes as like Harry Redknapp or not Harry Redknapp. Ooh, wrong one. Uh, Big Sam is good with like you know medium range talent, which is why everybody made the joke that he'd succeed with England. Yeah. yeah. Um. So like maybe a little bit of that, but I also think then that you know he's about to start a Premier League season. I doubt he's going to then just give that up to come manage the U.S. Fair enough, Christian. Any wild cards? I don't. Uh, yeah, the, you didn't before we uh, recorded. You you only said to pick two, and now the, the, now you're putting this on my lap. This yeah. is like a lot of pressure. I don't know. Um. Uh, I I sort of so, go back to like. Um, I'm trying to think of who, what coaches I sort of resonate with. But then at this point, I'm like, what are resumes that I kind of respect? And yep. maybe Rafa Benitez, we were talking about this oh, yes. before. Yeah. And Benitez, yeah, it doesn't Under seem pressure. like he's going to be, uh, you know, at Newcastle for too, too long. Uh, you know, Which, he, by the way, goes right into what you talked about, what you like about Juan Carlos Osorio. Rafa Benitez is like a Juan Carlos Osorio light. He makes a lot of decisions. He makes a lot of uh, game plans mm-hmm. for the team, but he doesn't overdo it. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a proven cup manager. That's where he tends to succeed. <laughs> I feel like my one concern Rafa Benitez, I feel like he makes plans for specific opponents, but they're defensive plans, whereas Osorio seem to be more um, attacking plans. Uh, maybe, But maybe a defensive plan is what the I U.S. Think I, needs. I think I'm all in on Rafa, uh, Rafa Benitez. I think, <laughs> I'd be I think comfortable Christian with it, yeah. Park. I think he is. Like, if we have a Venn diagram of all the things we want, Rafa Benitez might be in the middle. Might, he might be that center of the Venn yeah. diagram oh, for us. Speaks English, speaks Spanish. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Um, one name we haven't oh, mentioned. Yeah, and that's, that is a strike against Jorge Sampaoli. Uh, he is uh, Argentinian. I hear that uh, other Latinos don't like Argentinians. <laughs> oh. Someone told me that once, so that's a problem Where'd you hear well. that? Uh, some guy. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. one, one name we haven't mentioned, uh, Tab Ramos. Tab Ramos uh, is currently the U20 head coach. Um, he's the, I think he's still the youth technical director. I'm not sure um, if, if he's determined to hold on to that role or if he's angling for this US men's national team coach, uh, the, the head coach job. I do know that him and Ernie Stewart are kind of like old friends, right? So I wonder if the old US soccer thing of like jobs for the friends type thing uh, could, could mean that we get Tab Ramos. The only, uh, just saying the name, because we met Tab Ramos at, at, in Philly. Yeah. In, uh, uh, for, the, for the live show, yeah. For the, the United States. Uh, live show and the, and the co- coaches convention. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were talking to him for a little bit. Just felt like a very, very serious man. Yeah. That uh, and and didn't exude that sort of comfort that I would sort of imagine a uh, you know a, a you know the the, yeah. the men's national team coach would have. Yeah. Uh, so that's the only reason. He just seemed doesn't seem right maybe maybe he might be a better coach for the uh, for the youth player and can can give them a, a more stern direction mm-hmm. but didn't for when it when it comes to coaching men that personality doesn't seem like it would work too well but that's just my opinion and i'll say this uh i don't think it should be a legacy hire it can't be someone that was in the system previously because of what just happened in yeah, october i just i mean it would just seem like more of the same yeah, that, that would incite riots. Maybe not riots, but rare anger. You no, know? yeah, just riots. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> you know, but like riots inside of AO bars. I mean, bringing someone in from a system that's already failed, I think that's that's a bad look. I mean, I and I don't like you know we don't claim to have like inside knowledge or anything like that, but I do believe, and this could be famous last words when he's hired tomorrow, Todd Ramos. But like, <laughs> I genuinely believe that if he were going to be the U.S. coach, he would be the U.S. coach already. Like oh, that he yes, is yes. not. I I feel like either he has turned it down or it was not offered to him. Maybe it was offered on the interim basis, and he said, "I don't want the interim tag." Mm-hmm. But either way, it feels like he is such an obvious choice that he isn't already the the coach is confusing to me. Yeah, and I think that's why I don't really like throw him in there the way I do some other names that said again I wouldn't be surprised to see him and I definitely wouldn't be surprised to see Greg Berhalter all right oh Greg Berhalter yeah so um we didn't I don't think we landed on a consensus choice except maybe uh Rafa, Rafa which Rafa, I brought up Rafa, Benitez. Rafa Benitez, which I brought up so I'm the most expert person about go. coaching you are the, well, most, the I, most expert then, you, then you're <laughs> senior assistant to Rafa Benitez and Alexis is underneath you then. of course all right, so actually I quit I quit to go uh fight people at biker bars with San Paolo <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go watch videos with uh Juan Carlos Sorry, I guess you'll do a fashion show with her, Brenna. That's fine. <laughs> I'm just going to stare at photos of him. Yeah. <laughs> final, final question then. Um, I might. You don't know me. <laughs> when do you think we'll find out? So Ernie Stewart, his job, he, his start date is August 1st. He doesn't pick the guy though. 
he no, but he's heavily decisions. involved in the process, right? I mean, just as much as we are. You know, he's, <laughs> Ernie Stewart's getting paid to not piss it, so the fans aren't pissed off. <laughs> the guy does nothing. <laughs> wow. It's a strong take on the gym, Rob. It's, it's a, true. It's the, a new you, job. Give him a break. He doesn't even have a job description. It's the vaguest thing ever. They're doing this so that it look, 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 we're papering over these big issues. You think he's like a buffer? Yeah, pretty much. Role is, a, is a buffer between the, the board and the coach. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you guys watch Silicon Valley? Yeah. Um, I, I was just realizing there's like the, the season or the episode where they're interviewing, without spoiling too much, like they're interviewing potential CEO candidates and it's basically yes. all, all designed to get one character the job. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what I'm realizing now. It's like, what if that's what US Soccer is doing is they're like linking with a bunch of different coaches and potentially interviewing people just so what it is Tab Ramos. It's like, well, we looked at a bunch of people, none of them impressed, but Tab Ramos was the one who stood out above all. That'd be a hard sell. <laughs> yeah, you, you're on record. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, look, I like Tab. I'm Uruguayan. He's Uruguayan. I'd love for a Uruguayan to be at the helm of the U.S. Men's National Team. It'd be pretty dope. I, that'd be a really hard to sell to say that you looked at everybody, <laughs> everybody, and that's the guy you picked, the guy that was already here and you could have picked months ago. You spent all that money. <laughs> all right, so uh, to move on, could we please have um, a moment of silence uh, for Horta's LAFC debut. <laughs> <laughs> Our moment of silence is just laughter. It's collective laughter. Uh, that's a pretty uh, oh, cool again. <laughs> so I did, I did say that we came straight from uh, the, the Funny Bone for the Save the Crew uh, show, but we actually went to the bar afterwards. I actually forgot this. I meant to mention it. No, no, uh, we went to the bar afterwards. We watched El Trafico, right? Yeah. And we saw we saw 2-0 to LAFC. We saw Horta <laughs> make, his, make his debut. And then we saw two LA Galaxy goals. One of them... 100% his fault. Fair? Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much so. Yeah. It, it was, uh, uh, the, I know that they delayed. Wasn't he supposed to sign in the beginning of the year? And there was, there was some issue that, uh, wh- what team did he come from? And, uh, Benfica. Uh, Benfica. 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 And, but they said that they wanted to keep him because uh, it was an important part of the, their, their year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, oh boy. Yeah, uh, they, <laughs> they needed. <laughs> They, what did they? <laughs> Should have kept them a little longer, I yeah. guess. <laughs> they really needed to win their 36th championship. <laughs> uh, really round it out. Uh, uh, bummer. I felt bad. You know, when we uh, when LAFC began, we started uh, talking about LAFC a bunch. Uh, a lot of our listeners mm-hmm. on the Cooligans podcast just became into it. You, uh, Alexis, was on Heart of LAFC. Yeah, I went uh, down there for a tour of the stadium. It was uh, dope. G- great dude, and who, they also came to so the guy who does Heart of LAFC came to your show as well. All right. um, and so, yeah, uh, you, there's a sort of uh, sympathy you w- sort of want them, especially after the the first game, uh, the first set Trafico. Yeah, you want LAFC to have a better showing, and again they have a lead, and again they squander it. Hey, Why they got a point this time? They so, got. Yeah. They, got a point. <laughs> they didn't. Fully squander it, you know. <laughs> but that's you enough. See, out, uh, but man, if they had a couple more minutes, I feel like they might have. Because yeah. it definitely felt like it, I don't. I don't necessarily think that uh, the Galaxy changed what they were doing that much. I just think LAFC panicked that much that it just they just couldn't get it together. You started seeing all those balls go out of bounds and errant passes and giveaways to uh, the Galaxy, and it definitely felt like it's the beginning of. Like a, a narrative of, oh, they collapsed and lost. Oh, they mm-hmm. collapsed and drew. You think in their head they're like, oh, no, it's yeah, happening again. Not, not again, not again, <laughs> not again. Is it kind it's... of like an example of like American soccer 1.0 versus American soccer 2.0? Like the old way we used to play was like, keep running because in the 70th minute they're going to be gassed and that's when we hit them. And it seems like LA Galaxy does that, led by Shaggy Smith and has like Dom Kinnear or whatever his name, however you pronounce his last name. Yeah. Uh, but like... Bob Bradley is now like this new guy he dresses like Pep Guardiola, like he's gonna fight people outside of a bar with his like Stone Island jacket, you know? And he's like the new guy. He's like, who cares? Just attack. Defending? That's for babies. But I mean, didn't that make the game entertaining? Without yeah. a doubt. It, it made the last uh, traffic go entertaining. So I said we were in the bar, right? I want to say we were the only people watching it in this bar. We were definitely having the best time of anyone. I don't know. The people putting in the jukebox for My Scarona was pretty good. <laughs> they all no, collectively no. cheered that. I was like, what? They said My Scarodum. Sc- <laughs> oh. You didn't know that? No, is that what they That's said? That's exactly the Thank two you. guys. No, I heard, I heard them all like yell the same thing at the same time, and then they all like high fived. Like, Those it was two a guys straight eighties movie. They thought it was the funniest thing oh, they've ever done. They were like, my, they... my, my, my Scarota. That, that like, somehow oh. that somehow makes more sense and is worse at the same time. It's so much worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe they were having a good time, then. but we had a good time watching um, <laughs> El Trafico. <laughs> um, anyway, all right. So we are in Columbus tonight. Where are we going next, gentlemen? I, I know, but I want you to say. Oh, uh, we are. 
Chi-Town. going to Chi Town. Uh, we're going to Chicago. Our show is on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, that is July 29th. Yeah. Right. And uh, at, at the Laugh, Laugh Factory. Factory. Uh, so we got a be- lot of stars coming through. Chance the Rapper is going to be there. Chance Chief from- Keef is going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Star Studded uh, Affair. Does uh, Daryl? Do you know who both of those people are? Chance the Rapper and Chief Keef. I'm going to say the first one's a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. Yeah. Uh, both. Um, I don't know Chief Keef. Chief, not Chief Keith. Chief oh, Keith. Chief, Chief Keith. Keith. Chief Keith is, is the head of a polo team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, did Chance the Rapper host SNL? Yes, he, he did. did. Yeah, he, he did. was the, uh, that's a no. The hockey, the hockey, yes. The hockey, yes. Wait, his, so, his delivery was better than mine. <laughs> yes, he is so you're very not, funny. Wait, so your awareness of Chance the Rapper is entirely rooted in a sketch from SNL. <laughs> yes. Where oh, he boy. pretended to be an announcer for hockey. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's why you go on that show, right? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Chief Keef is amazing. I, I got to play some. It's uh, drill music. I'll play some for you. Yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's do that later. Oh, I, appreciate, gotta, I appreciate you went Chief Keef over Kanye. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, the, yes, but the World Cup Comedy Tour yes. show on Sunday, July 29th is going to be incredible at the Laugh Factory. Yeah, they are gonna, uh, we can officially announce Drew Connor from the Chicago Fire will be uh, yeah, on the show. Dude. So and, and they are, And he's got a story to tell. He does. <laughs> exactly, like Notorious B.I.G. By the way, uh, uh, <laughs> if you've ever listened to the Cooligans episode where Drew Connor was interviewed, uh, we're all worried about what this story might be like. <laughs> So come, come to the show and find out. If you go to totalsoccershow.com slash tour, uh, you'll be able to see all the dates and buy all the tickets. If you want to buy all the tickets, <laughs> that would be great. Please Yeah, please that. buy all the tickets. <laughs> Just one guy. He, I, I bought the whole room out. What do you want to tell you? Yeah. <laughs> I listened I listen to, to, to Total Soccer Show. I bought the whole room. bought all the tickets. What do I do with them? <laughs> Just Elon Musk in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> And then, I mean, and, I mean, Chance the Rapper's done that before, right? Hasn't he bought out theaters in Chicago? But that's more so for like moving and important films. Oh, sure, so I don't yeah. know if that's yeah. necessarily to hear Alexis Guerrero <laughs> make dick jokes. No, no. This is, a, this is as important. Uh, very at, important dick jokes, by the way. <laughs> yes, this is as important as saving a school in Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and then after Chicago, we are off to Atlanta for the All Star Game. It's the end of the tour. End of the tour. We're closer to the end it's than weird, the start right? now, right? Yeah, right. this is yeah. wild. Ooh. All right. I've got to say, I have laughed. I was saying Tyler earlier, I have laughed more per day in the last week or so than any time in my whole life. Like, oh, that means a lot. That's very to, kind to, of you. I oh, mean, not, not with you guys. Oh, sure. oh, yeah. <laughs> Making fun of us behind our back. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we've had a, a good time. And it's, uh, I, par- I, I have this partial feeling of like, I want to be home and just in my own bed. That'd be I'm, nice. I'm right here mm-hmm. with you. And, and I'm going to miss how much we've been laughing and having a good time and, and you know, on our car rides. Yep. And, and like a lot, we were talking about this before where you know we haven't really spent that much time together we met earlier this year we've always known of each other online and and your online uh personas you know i've met you guys on tinder a couple times uh <laughs> grinder even <laughs> but we've been you gotta, you gotta sp- <laughs> spread your bets yeah <laughs> by the way if you're gonna go on grinder don't forget to use uh promo code tss <laughs> hey if they want to sponsor I'm right hey, man. you gotta try the product first <laughs> again so uh but we've been having a good time, and I'm, and I'm gonna miss those laughs that we've been sharing. We've been having a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, it's it's gonna suck that you guys are so far away from us because uh, I, I feel like we've bonded. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. Maybe you guys should just move to Richmond. That seems like the logical solution. <laughs> I mean, financially it does. <laughs> <laughs> Especially also, our comedian salary. I'm also really happy that you managed to get both Daryl and I to score him this time. That was outstanding. <laughs> Thank you, that, Thank you, you start you start the show thinking I'm going to get these guys. I'm oh, 100. percent My brain is always like, hey, they look too comfortable. <laughs> Uh, we should mention um, we're not just going down to Atlanta for the All Star Game. There's also our show at the Punchline. Yes, yeah, right. the Punchline, punchline final show with a question mark on the end. I wasn't quite sure. Um, <laughs> so that's July 30th, 30th at yep. the Punchline. Again, totalsockshow.com slash tour. Click the link and you'll be able to buy again all the tickets. Yeah, and absolutely. By the way, I know we were joking about Star Studded. We are going to have players. Um, Chicago Fire. We're working on uh, Chicago Red Stars. There might be some Chicago Red Star players at Chicago. The one in Atlanta really is all star studded. I yeah. forgot to mention the guest. Yeah, list. this is absolutely insane. Good save. Yeah, well, that's why I'm here. Let's name the names. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, are we going to close to that naming the names? Everyone's, I mean, we could just leave it at that, but everyone's absolute favorite soccer personality. No one has anything negative to say about this person. Alexi Lalas. No, not not one word negative. No, nope, no one's ever said that. We got Max Bredos. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, who else? Yeah. <laughs> He's here with us. He's already. here right now. I'm Just, Max uh, Bredos, everybody. What, what an impression. What an impression. We've got uh, George. 
George Kareshi, Kareshi and Brooks Peck. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're going to have Mitch Hildebrand, the Atlanta yeah. goalkeeper, and we're going to have, we believe, Jason Davis as well, correct? We hope so. That's not confirmed yet, but we hope so. Hi, Jason, yeah. if you're listening. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, is uh, Mitch uh, confirmed? Yeah, yeah, he is. Oh, look at that. that. We're going to have Atlanta United players. Yeah. I like that we started promoting this without knowing who exactly who was confirmed, <laughs> and here we are. Yeah. When, he, when, when Daryl was like, go ahead, say the names. I'm like, oh, I have to remember them now. <laughs> uh, but this is going to be huge, uh, and we're going to be, this show's going to be a little different. We're going to be doing a lot of fun stuff that we haven't done at any of the other shows. Uh, this is just going to be the wild one. This is the one you want to be at. If you're going to be down in Atlanta for All Star, you got to come to the show. And how you get tickets is you could go to a WorldCupComedyTour.com, or when you see Christian and I, just hand us 50 bucks. We'll get you in there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right. So, Taylor, Christian, Alexis, thank you all for taking the time to talk to me today. I want to close with us all doing the Cooligans. I wasn't brave enough at the start. I feel like we've already woken people up if it, if it was going to happen. In the, are you, you going to go full volume on this one? Next door. That, yeah, let's, should we do it? Oh, God, yeah. well, you only live once. YOLO. YOLO. <laughs> still <laughs> lean back and yeah. be uncomfortable. More like yell. Oh, am I right, everyone? All right. <laughs> was that a Columbus oh crew God. joke? <laughs> it's so late. It's so late. Hey. It's definitely. <laughs> Save the crew, everybody. <laughs> it's definitely time to wrap it up. But would you guys please lead the chant? Oh, sure. Uh, so to wrap up Total Saga Show, my name is Christian Polanco. My name is Alexis Guerreros. My name is Taylor Rockwell. This is Daryl Grove. And together, what are we? The Cooligans! Cooligans!